welcome back in today's video we are going to discuss about vaginal infections as a third part of infections of individual pelvic organs we will be dealing about vulvovaginitis trichomoniasis monoliasis vaginitis due to chlamydia trichomatis atrophic vaginitis non-specific vaginitis and toxic shock syndrome starting with vulvovaginitis in childhood so guys you can split the word into three vulvo vagine and itis so vulvo is the vulva and this is the vagina and itis is inflammation so it is the inflammation of vulva and vagina which is occurring in the childhood it is occurring because of a lack of estrogen the vaginal defense is lost so the estrogen plays a very important role in the secretions as well as maintaining the acidic ph of the uh, vagina because of the lack of estrogen in the childhood the vaginal defense will be lost and the infection will occur very easily so you can see the inflammation of the vulva and the vagina what is the cause for this Non-specific vulvovaginitis, it occurs because of a foreign body in the vagina, any sort of foreign body or it could be an associated intestinal infestations. People suffering with the threadworm uh, infestations or problems can also suffer with vulvovaginitis in the childhood. Specific infection is caused by Candida albicans or Gonococcus these two so you can see the vulvovaginal candidiasis this is another thing but this candida albicans can also cause vulvovaginitis that is inflammation of the vulva and vagina the clinical features of vulvovaginitis are pruritus of a varying degree so the itching of the pudenda or the vulva and then there is vaginal discharge and also painful micturation Inspection will reveal the soreness of the vulva, whereas the labia minora will be swollen and red. If a foreign body is suspected in the vulva, a vaginal examination with an oral or a nasal speculum will help in the diagnosis. So, if you detect any foreign body with the help of the oral and the nasal speculum, you can uh, like uh, examine the vagina, do the examination, okay? And in the clinical features, what do we see? The vulva will be sore and my labia minora, minora will be swollen and red. So people will have a burning feeling, itching and pain in the vagina. The membranes which are lining the vagina will become red with a whitish coating. There is yellow or whitish discharge. The pain will be there during the sexual intercourse. This is for the elderly uh, people. Okay. In fact, investigations, the vaginal discharge is collected with the platinum loop and the two smears are taken. One smear will be used for the direct examination, whereas the other smear should be uh, used for the gram staining to culture the bacteria and to culture the fungi or the causative organism, gonococcus, whatsoever what the causative organism have to be cultured so that the specific antibody can be prepared. Vaginoscopy will be needed to exclude the foreign body or any sort of tumor if there are recurrent infections. So if a person is suffering with the recurrent infections, you have to exclude if any foreign body or a tumor is present. Moving on to the treatment of vulvovaginitis, a simple perineal hygiene will relieve most of the complaints. So the hygiene is very important in all sort of uh, vaginal infections. Hygiene, okay, it's very important. In case of the soreness or the removal of the foreign body, the estrogen cream should be given so that it can be applied locally every night for around 2 weeks. So you can see the estrogen cream here. This can be given for 2 weeks. This is the treatment. Hygiene and if the soreness and uh, if you have removed the foreign body, give them estrogen cream. If the specific organism, so you uh, send the uh, smear for the culture now you found out the causative organism for the causative organism the specific organism will be detected and the therapy which is specific to that particular organism should be directed to cure the condition moving on to trichomonas vaginitis 
Vaginal trichomoniasis is the most common and important cause of vaginitis in the childbearing period. So, it is one of the cause of vaginal inf uh, inflammation. Vaginal trichomoniasis, it is the common and uh, important cause of vaginal inflammation in the childbearing period, uh, just like vulvovaginitis. This trichomonas vaginat vaginitis is caused by trichomonas vaginalis. So, guys, vaginitis, this uh, itis is nothing but inflammation and this uh, vaginalis is the name of the organism which is causing the trichomonas vaginitis. This organism trichomonas vaginalis will be pure shaped. It is unicellular. So you can see in the picture the pure shaped organism which is containing a single nucleus and a single cell. A unicellular organism. It is having flagella. It is flagellate. And protozoa. It is a flagellated protozoa. The length is 20 nu and width is 10 nu. So you can see the length being 20 nu and the width being 10 nu. This is the width. Okay. And it is unicellular flagellated protozoa. It has got four anterior flagella. So you can see the four in number, the four anterior flagellas. And we have a spear like protrusion at the other end. You can see this axostyle, the spear like protrusion. There is also a undulating membrane in the anterior two third. You can see the picture here. The flagella. And if you divide it into three things, in the anterior two third, we have this undulating membrane it will be actively motile since it contains the flagella the mode of transmission of trichomonas vaginitis is by sexual contact the male will harbor the infection in the urethra and the prostate so you can see this trichomonia uh, trichomonas uh, residing in the prostate and also the urethra of the male and then it can transmit sexually to the female Transmission may also be possible by toilet articles from one woman to the other or by the examining gloves. So if one examining glove has been used for one woman and the same unclean uh, glove have been applied or used on the other woman, then she can transmit the infection from one woman to the other woman. The physician herself can cause the infection from one uh, women to the other women incubation period will be 3 to 28 days so once the trichomonas enters the body it will take around 3 to 28 days around a month to act pathology of trichomonas vaginitis in about 25 percent of the patient who are in the reproductive uh, period uh, the parasite will harbor in the vagina and it will be in a asymptomatic state so you see in 25 percent of women it is asymptomatic it takes around 3 to 28 days to show up its action. When the local defense will be impaired. So basically uh, the vaginal uh, defense. Okay, There is a local defense which is, called, uh, which is given by the lactobacilli and the estrogen. All these play a role and maintain a pH which is around uh, 3.8 to 4.5 a healthy vaginal ph okay it is around 4.5 which is somewhat acidic the lactobacilli species will produce the acidic ph they will kill the other bacteria which enter the vagina but what happens during and after the menses the estrogen levels alter even after the sexual stimulation and following any illness because of the alterations in the hormonal levels the ph of the vagina will be raised to around 5.5 to 6.5 and also during the menstrual period what happens the menstrual blood will have a ph of 7.4 which being in contact with the vagina will raise the ph of the vagina to around 6.5 it's, it was supposed to be acidic, right? So guys, you see here, the vaginal pH was supposed to be 3.8 to 4, 4.5. Okay, 3.8 to 4.5, which is somewhat acidic. Because the menstrual blood contains a pH of 7, it will make the vagina to increase the pH, uh, to decrease the pH, that is make it more alkaline towards 5.5 to 6.5. So it is giving a culture for the media a good medium for the culture 
at this level of the ph the trichomonas will thrive up okay they were uh, inside the body asymptomatic but then what happened once the ph levels alter and the defense is lost during an aptamensis and sexual stimulation these trichomonas will thrive up the organisms will usually lie between the rugae and the produce the surface inflammatory reaction so these uh, trichomonas which are in the rugae they will produce the inflammatory reaction of the vagina and only when the defense is lost this inflammatory reactions will start up okay they produce a inflammatory reaction in about 75% of cases the organism can be isolated uh, from the urethra or the skinny tubules or even from the bartholin's glands so there are openings in the vestibule so we have the vestibule which is containing this is the vaginal opening then the urethral opening we have bartholin's opening at 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock positions of the vagina bartholin's and we also have the skinnies this is the skinnies all these openings from these uh, sites you can harbor the you can isolate these uh, organisms the clinical features a patient suffering with the trichomonas vaginitis will have a sudden profuse and offensive vaginal discharge so you can see the profuse offensive vaginal discharge in these pictures so this is profuse it is offensive this is the vaginal discharge which is seen in the patients and it is dating from the last menstruation once the ph is altered the defense is lost so the profuse and offensive vaginal discharge start from the last menses irritation and itching will be present in varying degree around the introitus there will be the urinary symptoms such as dysuria that is painful urination and the frequency of micturition will also be altered there will be a history of previous similar attacks in the patient so all uh, relating to the menses after menses there is discharge okay the discharge is profuse offensive leucorrhea is very uh, offensive and profuse then you see the introitus there is irritation and itching and urinary symptoms we have dysuria and frequency being altered this is the clinical features discharge itching and urinary symptoms then on examination now when you examine a patient suffering with trichomonas we see that there is a thin greenish yellow and a frothy offensive discharge like we saw earlier and the vulva will be inflamed with the evidences of pruritus patient's uh, vulva is going to be inflamed the patient says that she is having a varying degree of pruritus that is itching of the pudenda and also the vaginal examination will be painful the vaginal walls will become red and inflamed and multiple punctate hemorrhagic spots so this is very important here the appearance the typical appearance of a patient with trichomonias they will have they will have a strawberry appearance on the cervix why the strawberry appearance it is because the entire wall is red and inflamed and this red and inflamed wall will contain many hemorrhagic spots so these hemorrhagic spots will give the appearance of a strawberry similar spots will also be found on the mucosa of the porto vaginalis part on the cervix even the posterior part of the vagina will also have the uh, this hemorrhagic spots on the speculum examination they give us uh, appearance of the strawberry you can see <coughs> the strawberry like appearance of the cervix in trichomonias treatment the treatment is very much effective with metronidazole metronidazole 200 mg thrice daily by mouth is given for a week so you can see metronidazole 300 200 okay 200 mg it is given for a week tinidazole to uh, two hand uh, single 2 grams that is nothing but 500 mg will be given uh, po po means uh, orally po is uh, orally uh, two times a day it is also equally effective like uh, the previous one the husband should be given the same treatment schedule for around a week moving on to the candida vaginitis or moniliasis candida 
मोनीलियासिस और कैंडिडा वेजाइनाइटिस द कॉजिटिव ऑर्गेनिज्म ऑफ मोनीलियासिस इज कैंडिडा एल्बिकेंस अ ग्राम ग्राम पॉजिटिव ईस्ट लाइक फंगाई सो यू कैन सी द ग्राम पॉजिटिव ईस्ट लाइक फंगाई दैट इज कैंडिडा एल्बिकेंस predisposing factors for a person to suffer with candida vaginitis is in diabetes there will be increased glycogen in the cells and glycosuria during pregnancy there will be increased vaginal acidity and glycosuria there will be increased glycogen in the cells which will cause a increased incidence of infections broad spectrum antibiotics lactobacillus they are decreasing the acid formation so acid forming lactobacilli so when you take a broad spectrum antibiotics like i told you the vagina contains lactobacillus this lactobacillus forms the acidic ph in the vagina so when you take a broad spectrum antibiotics they will decrease this acid forming lactobacilli combined oral contraceptive pills immunosuppression in hiv can also cause an increased incidence of trichomonas uh, sorry increased incidence of moniliasis the drugs like steroids thyroid parathyroid diseases and even obesity there are increased incidence of moniliasis clinical features the patient will complain of vaginal discharge with a intense vulvo vaginal pruritus there is severe itching there is very intense itching and the pruritus will be out of proportion to the discharge there will be dyspareunia that is painful sexual intercourse because of the local soreness which is present in the vaginal area so we have pruritus and the discharge and dyspareunia and this pruritus will be out of proportion to the discharge and dyspareunia is because of the soreness on the examination the discharge is thick curdy white and it will be present in flakes cottage cheese type so the discharge is uh, giving a typical name cottage cheese type discharge because it is curdy white and it is appearing in flakes you can see this curdy white appearing in flakes and it has been adherent to the vaginal wall they are sticking ad they are uh, adherent which which means they are sticking tightly to the vaginal wall this white curdy white thick thick spots vulva will be red and swollen there will be evidences of pruritus so you can see in the picture here uh, the vulva in condition of moniliasis it is going to be extremely red and swollen there will be itching vaginal examination it will be very tender it's very painful removal of the white flakes which are very adherent to the vaginal wall will result in the multiple oozing spots which is nothing but the bleeding can occur if you try to remove these uh, cottage cot cottage cheese type uh, this thing uh, the flakes and also the which are actually very adherent to the vaginal wall when you remove them there will be bleeding diagnosis the wet smear of the vaginal discharge is pre prepared so you're going to prepare a wet smear koh solution 10% will be added to lyse the other cells so after taking a smear you're adding koh solution so that the other cells will be lyse and you can focus on the causative uh, organism filamentous forms of micella pseudo hyphae can be seen under the microscope so you can see the pseudo hyphae and also the filamentous form of micella and the pseudo hyphae will be seen under the microscope two things you will see one is micella filamentous form of micella and also the pseudo pseudo hyphae culture in the nickerson's or saborots media will become positive in 24 to 72 hours so if you culture the uh, uh, organism in the media that is nickerson's or saborots media you can see the organisms to be being visible in around 24 to 72 hours so you can see the saborots dextrose agar here which is showing the causative organisms 
women with a recurrent vulvovaginitis vaginal boric acid capsules that is 600 mg gelatin capsules will also be effective boric acid will inhibit the fungal cell wall growth so how does this boric acid help in the treatment this uh, fungal so we saw the sude hyphae and the fungus so this fungal cell wall this formation will be inhibited by this boric acid hence it will help in the destruction of this organism so the women who are suffering with the recurrent vulvar vaginitis we give a boric acid capsule and also the 600 which are nothing but 600 mg gelatin capsules these also will be very effective treatment corrections of the predisposing factor like we saw the diabetes and during the pregnancy and the decreased vaginal pH all those predisposing factors obesity and so on all those have to be uh, properly dealt with first remove the predisposing factor in the patient then the local fungicidal that is the um, uh, agent which is going to kill the fungi they have to be commonly used are uh, the ones which are commonly used are of the pauline and azole group so the medications of the pauline and the azole group are prescribed nystatin clotrimazole meconazole econazole will be used in the form of either vaginal cream or the pessary can be given so guys you have to remember the names the groups are pauline and azole so we have clotrimazole and meconazole and econazole three things okay under azole groups we have clotrimazole meconazole and econazole and then we have the nystatin as well in the they are used in the form of a cream and also in the form of a pessary this is a treatment for moniliasis one pessary will be introduced high in the vagina at the bedtime at least for the two consecutive weeks in severe cases additional use of the pessary in the morning is been advocated the treatment should be continued even during the menstruation a single dose oral therapy with fluconazole 150 mg or itraconazole is found effective again the azole groups are given here during the menstruation fluconazole and itraconazole is found effective in case of moniliasis so guys do not forget the treatment in moniliasis that is the azole group okay azole group and we also have the pauline and azole group nystatin and all the azole group drugs associated intestinal moniliasis should be treated with fluconazole 50 mg daily orally for around 7 days husband should also be treated with nystatin ointment locally for a few days following each act of coitus the use of the condom should also be preferred by the couples so i hope it's clear we have fluconazole which is given orally and the nystatin ointment which is given in the picture this has to be given to the husband which can be applied locally after each act of coitus the systemic antifungal drugs fluconazole and itraconazole will be effective in a single dose oral therapy as well moving on to the next topic that is atrophic vaginitis or senile vaginitis vaginitis in the postmenopausal women is atrophic vaginitis so guys uh, atrophy is a reduction in the size why does the reduction occur it is because of the disuse and also it occurs in the postmenopausal women the ones who have reached menopause 40 uh, plus age okay this is known as atrophic vaginitis the term is preferably used to uh, senile vaginitis so preferred to the senile vaginitis we also called atrophic or the senile both can be called okay old age there is atrophy of the vulvo vaginal structures due to the estrogen deficiency so what's happening there is a deficiency of estrogen in the post menopausal period because of the deficiency of estrogen there is an atrophy of the structures because of the lack of estrogen the vaginal defense will be lost the vaginal mucosa will become very thin and it will become susceptible to the infections and also to the trauma so you can see the picture here the normal vaginal lining and the dry vaginal lining which you can see here it has become very thin and it has lost all the defense 
it is very susceptible to any sort of infection and the trauma so we are dealing about atrophic vaginitis there will be desquamation of the vaginal epithelium which can lead to the formation of adhesions and the bands between the walls this desquamation of the vaginal epithelium because of the desquamation there will be adhesions which are formed and also the bands will be formed between the walls the clinical features of atrophic vaginitis the women will suffer with a yellowish or blood stained vaginal discharge the discharge can also be blood stained there is yellowish or blood stained vaginal discharge discomfort dryness soreness in the vulva so we have dryness and soreness and also dyspareunia that is painful sexual intercourse the clinical features i hope they are clear in atrophic vaginitis we have a blood stained vaginal discharge discomfort dryness soreness and dyspareunia on the examination there will be evidences of pruritus vulvae vaginal examination is often very painful tenderness will be there and the walls will be very inflamed so you can see the swollen and inflamed vagina in case of the atrophic vaginitis this is a normal vagina whereas in atrophic vaginitis since the defense is lost estrogen levels are down and the ph is also altered so the vaginal walls are swollen and inflamed there is soreness present how do you treat a postmenopausal woman coming to you with atrophic vaginitis the systemic estrogen therapy should be considered if there is no contradiction so if the woman is not having any such contradictions we have to give them the estrogen therapy this will improve the vaginal epithelium so the estrogen is very important in maintaining a thickening of the vaginal wall a proper vaginal thickening a proper lubrication the discharge everything depends upon the estrogen levels so once the estrogen therapy has been given the vaginal epithelium will improve this will also raise the glycogen content in the body and it will lower the vaginal ph lower the vaginal ph guys lower in the sense it is making the ph acidic uh, so this is a neutral 7 lower 8 uh, 9 is making it higher lowering is making it acidic so once they lower the vaginal ph it uh, the lactobacillus will come into action and kill all the microorganisms which are trying to harm the vagina intravaginal application of the estrogen cream by an applicator is can also be effective to some extent Moving on to the next topic toxic shock syndrome TSS toxic shock syndrome will be commonly seen in the menstruating women between the 50 and 30 years of the age so it is occurring in the young reproductive age group the 15 to 30 years of age it is occurring following the use of the tampons polyacrylate tampon uh, tampons other conditions which are associated with toxic shock syndrome is also the use of female barrier contraceptives that is diaphragm so guys you can see the two main causes for this toxic shock syndrome is one the tampons so you can see the tampon here the second one is a diaphragm which is a contraceptive that is a female barrier contraceptive so the use of these can result in toxic shock syndrome it is characterized by the following features patient will suffer from fever which is more than 38.9 degree celsius macular rashes and myalgia gastrointestinal there will be vomiting and diarrhea cardio pulmonary there is hypotension adult respiratory distress syndrome So guys so the entire system is being affected here in toxic shock syndrome and it is not locally to the vagina the patient patient will have uh, systemic symptoms like vomiting diarrhea fever macular rashes and myalgia muscle pain we uh, cardio pulmonary there is hypotension and ARDS platelet count will be reduced to less than 1 lakh mm cube in renal there is increased bun which will be uh, more than twice the normal values 
in hepatic system the liver it is going to increase the bilirubin sgot sgpt levels that is twice again here also it is twice the normal level the mucous membrane that is the vaginal mucous membrane and also the oropharyngeal mucous membrane you can observe there is hyperemia the pathological features occurring here is because of the exotoxin which is released by the staphylococcus aureus so we have a causative organism in toxic shock syndrome is staphylococcus aureus this staphylococcus aureus will relieve a endotoxin which will go to the various systems of the body in the liver increasing uh, in the liver increasing the sgot sgpt values and then uh, we saw so many things sgot sgpt being raised here here bun being raised and then platelet levels coming down hyperemia of the mucous membrane then causing the systemic symptoms like fever rashes vomiting diarrhea in the pulmonary acute respiratory distress syndrome all these are caused because of this exotoxin being released by the staphylococcus aureus it can also lead to the multi organ system failure now you can see the clinical features of the toxic sy syndrome being represented in a single picture starting from the head patient will have fever which is more than 102 that is 38.9 degrees celsius 102 degree fahrenheit and there will be a uh, headache irritability confusion nausea and vomiting macular erythematous uh, appearance and then there is hypotension disquamation of the palms and the soles we have diarrhea the blood sound uh, the blood count the platelets coming down and the liver renal function uh, studies should be done so that you can make out the enzyme levels and it will be raised two times twice the normal value and the uh, culture for the staphylococcus aureus should be done and the tampon should be immediately removed so this is the clinical feature of the toxic shock syndrome the treatment is the correction of the hypovolemia and the hypotension with the intravenous fluids and also the dopamine infusion is done in the intensive care unit the dopamine is usually indicated for the correction of the hemodynamic imbalances which are occurring in the toxic shock syndrome they will be present because of these endotoxic septicemia which is occurring because of the staphylococcus aureus the parenteral corticosteroids can also be used so guys here they are using the corticosteroids to reduce the inflammation and also to suppress the immune system so that they can reduce the inflammation which is caused by the uh, staphylococcus aureus the blood coagulation parameters and the serum electrolytes are checked and corrected infection can be controlled by anti staphylococcal penicillin so the anti staphylococcal uh, uh, penicillins uh, that is cloxacillin clindamycin and oxacillin can be used for around 10 to 14 days so we have three drugs Clo uh, cloxacillin clindamycin and oxacillin all these three can be used for around 10 to 14 days for a period of 2 weeks so you can see this clindamycin and the capsules clindamycin capsules the tampon should be removed and also the cotton tampons are the safest you have to advise the patients to use the cotton tampons and the mortality following the toxic shock syndrome is around 6 to 10% thank you with this we come to an end of vaginal infections so all types of vaginal infections i hope everything is clear and if you like my video hit the like button and subscribe